Today we're going to begin our discussions of acids and bases. Well, why did I have this picture of hydrangeas in front of you? You may have some of these in your yard, or if you ever go to the Cape, you see these all over the place. Hydrangeas can be different colors. They're actually blue if they're in a basic solution, as you see here, or they can be red if they're in an acidic solution. So that, let's start with some definitions of acids and bases. So the most simple definition is what we call the Arrhenius definition. This name, uh, Arrhenius is named after a scientist who came up with the idea of acids and bases. Next is the pH range. Next is what taste do acids and bases have? Now, I'm not telling you to taste acids and bases in the lab, but you probably have some acids and bases in your cabinets, in your kitchen and home that you already eat all the time. So, uh, next, we have indicators. There are some things that are indicators of acids and bases. That means they turn colors, just like we saw the hydrangea, things that we use in the lab. And two of those we're going to look at are litmus and phenolphthalein. So first of all, properties of acids and bases. So the first property you're going to look at is the, well, the definition. Now, this is a definition. Uh, acids have H plus in solution. Another word for H plus is a proton. Bases have hydroxide. We know if there's hydroxide there, it's a base. So anytime there's more proton or H plus in solution, it's an acid. Anytime there's more. Next one, pH. Acids have a pH of less than 7. pH uh, Bases have a pH of greater than 7. If the pH is right at 7, there's an equal amount of acid, equal amount of base, and we say it's neutral. Next, taste. Acids have a sour taste. And bases taste bitter, acids or bases. Next, indicators. An indica what indicator is litmus? Acids turn litmus red, and bases turn litmus blue. So, turn blue. Let me point out something here that help us as far as memory. We see bases begin with the letter B. Also, bitter begins with the letter B. Also, blue begins with the letter B. So we have bases, bitter, blue. I already know a lot about bases. Let's keep going. Another indicator, phenolphthalein. We've actually used this. If you put phenolphthalein in an acid, it has no color. It's what we call colorless. If you put phenolphthalein in a base, it turns pink. Acids, if you put acid on metals, certain metals, they'll produce, they'll bubble, and those bubbles are hydrogen gas. Also, bases are slippery. Bases, if you put them in hand, they'll be slippery. So that might give you an idea of some things that are bases. So what I'm going to do next is look at some common, everyday things. We're going to classify them either as acids or bases. Let's go. So first, we have vinegar and Drano. What do you think those are? Vinegar is actually an acid. Vinegar is the same thing as acetic acid. And next, we have Drano, which is a base. So that's, that's an acid and a base. Let's do a few more things. That was fun. So here we have five different things. Let's see if you can classify these as acids or bases. First, let's start with the lemon. What do you think a lemon is, acidic or basic? A lemon is definitely an acid. Hopefully you picked acid. Lemons contain citric acid. Citric acid is what vitamin C is. So any citric, uh, citrus fruit would have citric acid or be an acidic thing. So for example, grapefruits, Oranges, lemons, limes, all those are acids. All right, let's keep going. Milk of magnesia. I think this might be one of the hardest ones. Milk of magnesia, anybody want to guess? That is a base. Milk of magnesia actually contains magnesium hydroxide. It's got. It's actually, the magnesium hydroxide doesn't uh, dissolve in water, so it's actually a suspension of magnesium hydroxide. It looks like milk, but it's magnesium hydroxide. So that's a base because of the hydroxide that's in the compound. Next, we have Windex. I know a lot of people use Windex to clean it. There's something in Windex that makes it either an acid or base. You may know what that is. That is ammonia. I'm not sure if you remember the formula for ammonia. Ammonia is NH3. And so that would make ammonia, a, they're carbonated. And since they're carbonated, they contain something called carbonic acid. Things like this would definitely be an acid. So we got another acid there. Base is going to be considered a base. So anything that's considered like a soap, would be slippery, and so we call that a base. So I like this one because it actually has the proton or the hydrogen ion concentration written next to it. And when I see that, what's important to recognize is when you go from a pH of 1 to pH to 2, you're actually changing the proton concentration, not a power of 1, but a power of 10. Because if you look at that, for example, if, you, if you're drinking the acid concentration there would be 0.001. But if you started to drink a lemon, 
that would be 0.01. So that's 10 times as acidic. Now, if you go up to the water, we count the number of hydroxides and the number of protons in the water. They're exactly equal. There's an equal number of hydroxides and proton, uh, protons, so that means it's perfectly neutral. So that's a, that's a nice pH scale there. Let's look, I like this pH cell because what it does, it shows the nice balance between proton and hydroxide. And one thing to think about is I don't have proton right, written here. I have something called hydronium, H3O+. H3O plus means the same thing as H+. Plus. It means it's just combined with water. But what you see here is they've multiplied the proton concentration by the hydroxide concentration, it's always, always equal to 10 to the minus 14. So this is an extremely important formula. So for example, if you have a solution that's of, of pH of 12, that's going to be basic. But the uh, proton concentration is really small. It's 10 to the minus 12. But the hydroxide concentration is pretty large. It's 10 to the minus 2. And notice down here for our neutral solution, you follow the neutral solution right here, exactly equal, 10 to the minus 7 for both the proton and the hydroxide. Equal, and so it's neutral. And notice as, you, so as, as, it becomes, as the pH becomes lower, it becomes more acidic and the proton concentration increases as you go in this direction. So going down to zero, your increase in proton concentration becomes more acidic. Going in the opposite direction, and I think all these things are basic above 7, but as the number gets higher and higher, each higher number is more basic, contains more hydroxide than the previous number. Now, we've got four important formulas here, and I'd like you to write each one down because we're going to use them a lot all the way through this acid-base unit. The first is pH is equal to the minus log of the proton concentration. Remember, when anytime I write H+, plus, that's a proton. You could also say it's H3O+. Plus. That means exactly the same thing. So that's formula number one. Formula number two, pOH is equal to the minus log of the hydroxide concentration. Third formula, pH plus pOH is equal to the number 14. Just a little subtraction there. Hopefully, you can do that even without a calculator. And the last one, you've seen this before, the proton concentration times the hydroxide concentration gives you a number that times 10 to the minus 14, and that's always equal. So four extremely important formulas. And the other thing I want to ask you to do is to grab a calculator and make sure you can actually calculate each one of these and not just write the numbers down. A lot of students understand the math, but have a pro problem putting the numbers in their calculator. So make sure you can do that, because the numbers could be switched when you actually see these in class. So let's do three problems. First problem. The concentration of HCl is 6.2 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. Remember, molar is moles per liter. What is the concentration of each ion? What is the pH of the solution? All right, let's do this one. Well, first of all, you have to recognize that HCl, when it goes into water, it dissolves completely. Now, it dissolves completely. It actually splits up, or what we call ionizes. It is no longer HCl. Now, it's a proton and a chloride ion. So for every one HCl, you get one proton, and you get one chloride. So one for one. So if the concentration of HCl is 6.2 times 10 to the minus 4, the concentration of the proton is 6.2 times 10 to the minus 4. And guess what? The concentration of the chloride is also, boom, 6.2 times 10 to the minus 4. So whatever the concentration of that acid is, if it's a strong acid, the proton and the chloride concentration both will be the same number. Let's keep going. So we've answered the first part of the question. Next, we're going to answer what is the pH of the solution. I gave you four formulas. Which one do you think is going to be the most appropriate? Hopefully, you selected this formula right here. pH equals minus log of the proton concentration. You see here, what I did is I substituted the 6.2 times 10 to the minus 4 because this is the, the concentration of H+. Plus. So I substituted this in right there for the H+. Plus. Now what you need to do is put minus log and then put 6.2. I would recommend using the EE button and then minus 4 and then enter. When you do that, you should get this number. Boom! 3.21. And it's below 7, so we would say the solution is acidic. So 3.21 is the answer for the first question. Make sure you can get that on your calculator, please. Question number 2. Let's do it. All right, question number 2. Calculate the hydroxide concentration in the following solution and indicate if the solution is acidic, basic, 
or neutral. We talked about that earlier, so hopefully you can do that now. The uh, concentration of the solution. The concentration of H plus is 8.89 times 10 to the minus 7. But I want to know what the hydroxide concentration is. So I gave you four formulas. Let's see if you can select the correct formula to use. Hopefully you selected the formula proton concentration times hydroxide concentration equals 10 to the minus 14. So all we need to do is plug this number in here, the 8.89 times 10 to the minus 7, in for our proton concentration, and then we can find our hydroxide concentration. So it should look like this. So the hydroxide concentration is going to be equal to 10 to the minus 14 divided by the concentration of our proton, which is 8.89 times 10 to the minus 7. Now put this in your calculator. Make sure you get exactly the same number. If you can't, please see me. Everybody needs to be able to do these problems because you're not always going to be given the same number. So let's see, let's see what you get. Hopefully you got this number, 1.12 times 10 to the minus 8. So uh, we would say that is the concentration of hydroxide. Now the last thing I want to do is say is this a solution acidic, basic, or neutral. Now there's really two things you could do here. You could plug the proton concentration into minus log, pH equals minus log of uh, that concentration to find out what the pH is. Or you could just compare them. And what, so let's do that. So let's compare the proton concentration to the hydroxide concentration. Which one's bigger? Hopefully you recognize that the proton concentration, the 8.89 times 10 to the minus 7, is bigger than the 1.12 times 10 to the minus 8. And since that's true, the H plus is greater than the OH minus, the proton is greater than the hydroxide, the solution is called acidic. It would be neutral only if those two numbers were exactly the same, and basic if the hydroxide was greater, greater. But this one's definitely acidic. One last question, let's do it. Number three, if the hydroxide concentration is 5.6 times 10 to the minus 6, what is the pH, and what is the pOH of the solution? And after you do all of that, tell me is the solution acidic, basic, or neutral? Okay, let's go. So first of all, what is the H plus? Well, we just did one just like this. Hopefully you picked this formula. Proton times hydroxide equals 10 to the minus 14. So you simply need, need to plug in your hydroxide concentration for your, uh, for your hydroxide, which is right here. So you're going to plug this in right there for your hydroxide concentration. Just going to plug in right there and see what you get. And so when you do that, the proton would be uh, equal to 10, uh, 10 to the minus 14 divided by 5.6 times 10 to the minus 6. When you do that, your hydroxide concentration should be 1.8 times 10 to the minus 9 molar. And hopefully that's what you got. All right, let's, let's do the next thing. The pH. Well, we know we have this formula. Remember, you're looking at those four formulas. Have them written down somewhere so you can look at them and refer to them. pH equals minus log of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 9. So you put that in your calculator. See what you get? You get 8.74. So that would be the pH of your solution. Next, we want to know the pOH. We haven't used this formula before. So to find the pOH, one easy way to do that is to use the formula pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So we simply need to say 14 minus 8.74 equals 5.26. So the pOH is equal to 5.26. So the last thing is the solution acidic, basic, or neutral. We actually can tell, uh, tell by two things. First of all, we've already calculated the pH. The pH is 8.74. and We know that number is greater than 7. And since the pH is greater than 7, that would indicate that the solution is basic. Next, we can compare the hydroxide to the proton concentration. The hydroxide concentration is the order of 10 to the minus 6. The proton concentration is 10 to the minus 9. 10 to the minus 6 is greater than 10 to the minus 9, that would indicate that it's a basic solution. I love chemistry. I love chemistry.